today we live in a society that's safer than ever before. And while I'm saying this, you may think that I'm hallucinating, that I'm not in touch with the day-to-day -day news reality, right? Because what you see on the news are bombings in Damascus, shootings in Egypt, beheadings in Yemen, assassinations all over the world, right? How can we be safe? Um, last November, when our youngest daughter was born, um, Syrian troops were waging war just north of Damascus, resulting in horrible images like these. Now, at that moment, I held her in my arms and I watched the news, and the world didn't feel safe. I was afraid. I was afraid that our youngest daughter would grow up in a world of war, a world of death, an unsafe world. So how can we explain this? How can we explain not feeling safe, but at the same time being safe? Right? It seems such a, such a paradox. Today I'd like to show you and share with you that we are indeed living in the most peaceful time ever. Now, this idea is not new. Many scholars, uh, most notably uh, Steven Pinker at Harvard and Manuel Eisner at Cambridge, have uh, devoted a great deal of research on this theme. And they and others have shown this, that uh, the risk of dying in battle has decreased from a staggering 18 per 100,000 globally to less than one per 100,000. And this again may feel, may feel strange, right? But yes, this is including genocides such as in Rwanda, including wars such as in the Balkans and in the Middle East. So we've come a very long way from bringing down that rate. Now, deaths in battle are definitely important and, and appropriate to take a look at as a measure of peace. But what is even more important is homicide. Why? Because out of every 10 deaths, approximately one is responsible or is caused by war. And the vast majority of violent deaths are caused by homicide. And in homicide too, we see a great decline over time. Now, statistics on homicide go very far back. And we as academics, we love statistics and we love graphs such as these. Um, and what we see is that homicides, we can go back all the way to the 1300s, uh, in which homicide had an approximate rate of 47 per 100,000. Now, just to compare, over centuries, this decreased tremendously to six globally, and even two in Western Europe, and even one or less than one in the Netherlands. Currently, in the Netherlands, approximately 150 people die a year of homicide. And you may argue, yes, those are 150 too many, but it's about the same risk as you dying from a stomach ulcer, for example. Right? So the odds are virtually, well, they're very, very low. Mm. So how can we be so wrong about something that seems so much in our face, right? Well, there are several reasons for this. And first of all, mm, notably, Steven Pinker has argued this, is that compared to several decades ago, or several centuries ago even, we identify with others much more than we, did to, than, than we do today, right? So mm, it's only been recently that we've known the end of apartheid, or that women were given the same rights as men. That we share our feelings with people of other cultures, that we can identify with people from other races, other ages, other genders. Now even, you may argue that we want to treat animals the same way we treat ourselves, right? We don't want to kick or hit them. So we extrapolated those rights that we have to those of other cultures and other backgrounds as well, which leads us to think and to feel when we see these horrible uh, genocides, horrible wars around the world, when we see those happening, we think to ourselves, that victim isn't me, but it could have been me. I wasn't on that boulevard in Nice. I may have not been born in the south side of Chicago. I'm not from Rwanda, but that victim could have been me. Another element that's very different now than it was several decades ago is the hyperconnectivity of this world, right? We have a 24-7 news cycle informing us on all sorts of crimes occurring worldwide, and also via Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. The news is literally in our faces. And this is 
Mm. This is quite new. This is not something that has happened in centuries. It was actually uh, in the 1960s this took place for the first time during the Eichmann trial. Um, and that was the first time in history that people showed the atrocities of the Second World War, that they became familiar with the horrible things that happened in the Nazi concentration camps. And why? Because witnesses came to the stand, not just one, but a hundred, and they shared the story of what had happened to them. And that story was broadcasted all over the news, all over the world. Right? So that was the very first time, and ever since, this new cycle has extrapolated to, like I said, beheadings in Yemen, assassinations in San Salvador, homicides in Brazil. So now more than ever before, we are connected with people more so than ever before, and we identify with others more than ever before. Now we come to the point at which we may ask, okay, we may statistically be safer, not feel safer, but how to, how to come to terms with this paradox, how to deal with this paradox. Mm. First of all, you may argue, uh, yeah, well, let's mm -hmm, go ahead and, and lead our daily lives. Mm. On the other hand, it also leads us to be more resilient, right, and be more aware of the dangers that are facing us. Mm. Another reason why we feel so fearful as we do nowadays um, is because we are con constantly reminded of a threat that may be facing us. And maybe for some of you who visited the United States, um, there's a continuous announcement once you go into the subway, into the metro system, and there's this voice saying, if you see something, say something, and there's a 1-800 number that you can dial. So in other words, there's a constant reminder that we could be a hypothetical next victim. Maybe not now, maybe not tomorrow, but we could be, right, at any moment in time. So again, how to deal with this paradox? We may not, we may be safer, but we may not feel safer. Well, on one hand, we may argue, uh, and unfortunately this is the case, um, that homicides will continue to happen as long as we live on this planet. As long as we are here all together, there will be major and minor conflicts and in some cases result in violent death. On the other hand, you may also say, that we as humanity have come very far to bringing down that battle rate, that war rate, that homicide rate. So let's be aware of that safety paradox and let's take lessons from the past because we have come very far and let's take those lessons to the future to break down, to bring down violent deaths even more. Thank you.